Coming up on Mountain News this morning, a police chief here in the mountains speaks about his journey more than two years after being shot in the line of duty. And as the holidays near, officials are asking people to stay away of holiday theft. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Olivia Calfi. The time is 530 on November 16th. Now let's check in with Chief Forecaster Brandon Robinson for a look at your forecast this morning. And Brandon, I know we've been talking a lot about these wildfires and people need to be aware of it. Mm -hmm. We also can't overshadow how beautiful today is going to be. I'm oh, yeah, excited. absolutely. For November, I mean, it's not bad at all. I mean, it really isn't bad at all. But uh, yeah, you're right. The wildfires, a big thing. We head out to Wayne County this morning on our Kentucky Mezzanet camera four miles northwest of Monticello. Now, I know it's a little dark. That's the only problem with this time of the day is you've got a lot of cameras that are dark, but it's a beautiful view during the daytime hours. But to highlight there, the further west that you are, the less of a wildfire risk that you have. So current temperatures across the region, we are looking at the 30s, 40s, and even some 50s out there to start the day. We are at 53 in Jackson. We are at 50 in uh, Jacksboro. We are also in the 50s, or excuse me, not 50s, upper 40s there, Pikeville and Harlan. Now you go the other way, 30 in Grundy, 31 now in Clintwood, and up to 33 in Irvine. So some colder air out there as we start our day. Your 12-hour planner for today, we are going to see lots of sunshine. I do believe we'll see sunrise and sunset today, 714 and 522, but 72, as Olivia mentioned, beautiful day for November and very much above average. Just got to keep an eye on those fires. Olivia. All right, thank you, Brandon. More than two years have passed since Norton, Virginia Police Chief James Lane was shot several times while on a call. Now, after court hearings and a conviction mixed in with therapy while relying on faith and the community, Lane spoke with WIMT's Chandler Wilcox about his journey. There are several reminders of May 7th, 2021 for James Lane when he was shot several times on a call, scars on his body, a cane to help with walking. It had a, a drastic impact on my mobility, uh, both walking but also in using my arms uh, and continue to go through therapy weekly. There are also positive visual reminders honoring his strength through a horrifying incident. Our department realized just how much support we have from our community. Uh, our citizens just, just came together. Sympathy and readings in the good book helping Lane keep his head up he does not want the incident to define him. I just try to focus on the positive things in life uh, and moving forward. And, and for me, that's probably one of the biggest things is I just focus on the future. What does the future look like for Lane? Helping teach others about going through adversity. Well, there's no question that now there's more attention to uh, these type of incidents if they occur. And the peace of knowing justice has been served. James Buckland, who shot Lane, was convicted of several charges. I'm very pleased with the verdict uh, uh, from the trial um, and so thankful uh, with that. Lane says being a policeman is a calling, one that he will continue to respond to. In Norton, Channel Wilcox, WYMT Mountain News. The sentencing for James Buckland is scheduled for January 9th. He is facing potentially two life sentences. A Lexington High School student is facing charges after police say they found a loaded gun in their backpack. It happened at Dunbar High School. Metal detectors helped police find the gun. Dunbar's principal sent a letter home to families assuring them that all students and staff were safe and praising the swift actions of FCPS police. But parents and guardians waiting to pick up their students were still startled by the incident. Mohammed Army's nephew is a freshman at Dunbar and he says he's still worried. I graduated Dunbar 2016 and I think they installed the detectors like a year or two afterwards. Um, yeah, it's it, it's it's pretty insane. I mean, I guess like you know, it becomes normalized for the kids going here, you know, they grew up with it, but you know, at what level do we have to, uh, you know, sort of, uh, you know, find a solution. 
This is the second time this calendar year that a loaded gun was discovered at Dunbar after a similar incident in February. That situation was also quickly handled by security and led to a student's arrest. And two other students were arrested last year for unlawfully bringing firearms to campus, one at Frederick Douglass and one at Henry Clay. The holidays are a special time to spend with your loved ones, but they are also a time when the number of burglaries increase. With Christmas just a few weeks away, we're getting tips from police on how to protect your home. The most important step is securing any doors and windows in your home, including your garage door. Police say investing in high security locks and alarm systems is never a bad idea. It's also important to post warning signs and window decals on your property. Not only will this help deter criminals, but having surveillance video can also help police identify any burglars. We get vehicle descriptions. We have the flock cameras that allow us to put that information inside their system and we can try to identify a vehicle that way, and we have in the past, which is uh, very beneficial. Police say burglaries are often crimes of opportunity, so being proactive is one of the best ways to prevent theft. A four-month-old baby is dead after a vehicle fire yesterday morning in Nicholasville. Witnesses told police they saw a man working on a pickup truck in a driveway when it exploded. The man who police called a suspect ran off and it was believed he was seriously injured. Police found him at an area hospital. Right now they are not releasing his name. The baby was inside the vehicle at the time of the explosion and was killed. Pike County School District officials have confirmed a man arrested Monday and charged with rape has been a substitute teacher with the district for the last few years. 25-year-old Hunter Plymel of Kemper was taken to the Pike County Detention Center by Kentucky State Police earlier this week. An arrest citation indicates the incident happened on a remote road near Sydney in June 2022. A preliminary hearing is set for next Tuesday. Staff at the Kentucky Attorney General's Office announced a settlement with Walgreens. The settlement is worth $102 million and is tied to the opioid epidemic. The AG's office says the agreement resolves allegations that Walgreens engaged in unlawful business practices, which made the opioid epidemic worse. Officials say the $102 million will be paid to Kentucky during a 15-year period. Winter weather season is on its way and experts say there are a few things you need to do with your car to best prepare yourself for the upcoming months. Ice, freezing rain and snow are just some of the factors that can play into slick winter roads. In these scenarios, traction is key. Experts say checking your tires tread before the first snow will be essential to maintain safety on the roads. If you don't have proper air pressure in your tire, you're not going to have proper traction on the road. When you lose the air pressure, it doesn't come back when it warms up. Tire pressure can decrease about one pound per square inch for every 10 degrees the temperature drops. It is not due to air escaping, but rather the air inside the tire condensing. Once it does that, it takes up less space inside the tire. Forest fires are still burning in parts of eastern Kentucky. Officials say they believe most of those have been intentionally set. Putting them out or containing them has been a burden on state firefighters, but help from out of state has arrived. WYMT's Phil Pendleton has more on the efforts in Clay County. They traveled three days from Idaho to help weary firefighters in eastern Kentucky. Fire season slowed down for us back at home, so we're able to come and help down here. First of Wednesday was tackling fires along Kentucky 1350 that were set early in the morning. What's happened here is we've had what we call a hot set where somebody has come and they've ignited a wildfire for reasons unknown. Five to 15 acres burned in the Sexton's Creek area. No homes were damaged, but it did leave a smoky hot mess in the area. We believe that it was set at the bottom near the roadway 
and with the unburnt fuel above the fire, it, it, it gives the fire an opportunity to burn uphill at a rapid pace. The Idaho crew will likely stay about another week. It's different than back home with the fuel type and the fire behavior. I mean, we have light flashy, a lot of grass fuels and a lot of heavy timber canyons, whereas a lot of this hardwood litter, we don't have a lot of hardwood litter back home. The goal for everyone is protection and keeping the flames away from homes. Me and the Clay County Ranger were on a fire last night that was right behind um, uh, somebody's home. Some fire did come within 100 feet of a home, but none were damaged. Clay County, Phil Pendleton, WYMT Mountain News. Firefighters from at least seven states, including Florida, Texas, and Arkansas, are helping Kentucky crews. The Garrett Fire Department is working with an area food truck to bring in funds for the volunteer first responders. Two Big Pigs Barbecue opened its window to the Garrett community yesterday, inviting folks to the food truck with a portion of the proceeds benefiting the fire department. From the dangerous fires to the way the department reaches out to families with its Santa run, those involved say it is the least they can do to give back to those who give so much. So they need all the help they could get. Honestly, they do. And when a company like this will donate a portion of their income to help the fire departments, the community needs to step up and do their part and come out and support this company. The fundraiser saw a lot of support from people in the community and is one of many the business has been part of this year. Coming up, iconic artist Andre 3000 is returning with his first album in more than 15 years. And the forecast continues to stay dry and fairly mild for November today, but some much needed rain chances are on the way starting tomorrow, maybe into Thanksgiving week as well. We'll track that forecast for you in about three minutes.